So, today I'm going to be playing basically every tank in War Thunder. We're doing the Calibers Evolution Challenge, something that I've just made up on the spot. So basically, I'm going to be going through every tank in War Thunder by evolving the size of the projectiles it fires. And that's going to be starting from the smallest possible to the biggest possible in the game. And yes, if you know the game well enough, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, you're going to have to stick around to see if that happens. Now, of course, I could include the SPAAs, but frankly, if I do that, this video is going to be a million hours too long, and it's already going to be quite long as it is. So we're going to be starting off with just tanks and some of the SPAAs, mainly those that are either light tanks or some sort of AFV. Otherwise, it's tanks and tanks only. So, of course, the first one we're going to be looking at is the M2A2, which if you didn't know, this is an actual light tank that was produced by the US Army. It has a Browning 50 caliber right here, and it also has a 30 caliber 1919 over here. And if that wasn't enough, we have a third one down here. So there's two 762s and 150 caliber. Now all that seems quite a lot for one tank, but it is still a tank that doesn't have a cannon. So this is what we're starting off with, and let's get to it. Now of course I am going to be following the rules of my previous challenges with one slight difference to make things a little bit harder. So previously, if I got a kill, I would go up one BR, or in this case one caliber. However, this time, no matter how many kills I get, I still only go up one caliber. Meaning you are going to see the full gamut of every single caliber in this game, assuming I have it unlocked. I do have this tank fully unlocked, or spaded. I did get a few comments from people wondering what spaded meant. Well, that's what it means, to unlock everything on it. And then you get this little spade icon. So if you ever hear somebody say spaded, that's what it means. I gotta be careful here. As even at 1.0, there's a lot of things that can shoot right through me because they have actual cannons, and I don't. I also don't have the ability to fire to the right side. It's a light problem. Okay, we're gonna get a capture here. I think- ooh, let's drop some artillery on those guys over there. Anybody? I don't see anything. One time I need just one kill, and I can't see anything. Oh no! Oh! What are you? Uh-oh! No 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 this is bad this is bad Oh okay the M2 saved me okay we're all right but I need to stay alive Oh something's coming alright hello Something's over there Oh I did take out one of his crew though but that doesn't count all right that's not quite the auspicious start that I wanted to have but, you know, it's fine. We can deal with that. Okay, I'm gonna drop artillery over there. I wonder if that should count if I get an artillery kill, because at, at 1.0, you can get artillery kills kind of easily. <laughs> I mean, assuming you land anywhere near anybody. Okay, possible enemy tank on my immediate right here, I think. Sounds like one. There's one. Oh, that's a Panzer III. I cannot pen that. Back up. We got decent speed, but only forward. <laughs> oh, hello, little L3s. They're able to deal with Panzer threes, I think. Come on! Oh, I knocked out his driver. What is it with it with this one crew injury thing? I tell you what, it's definitely a good thing we're not counting uh, secondary weapons in this challenge because the Puma actually has the smallest secondary weapon in the game. It's a machine gun that fires a 5.56 NATO round, which is possibly the smallest caliber in the game right now. All right, I think for my own safety and sanity, we need to be in cover. We gotta get in close and we gotta ambush people. So we gotta get in here and not be seen. Oh, that sounds like a lot more tanks than I was anticipating. Okay, Bruh. I may have made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't going to do anything against a Panzer II. And I'm already slightly regretting my decision to start with the 50 caliber. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Stewart. You are going to be my designated distraction for today. So why don't you go out there and show me where they are? <laughs> Oh, there's one right there. And he shot at me and somehow missed. I, I don't quite understand how that happened. Let me just get my turret around. Yeah, he's right there. The little Swedish guy. Is he looking right at me? I think he's looking right at me. I'm not sure I can actually punch through that armor. So I think if I go down this way, let's go down this way. Yeah, he was still looking this way. <laughs> All right, well, we're not, we're not safe by any means. Okay, Cause I can hear something moving down there too. What is that? Oh, it's a scout car. He's not looking my way, though. Get him. Get him. 
Okay, both his turret crew are down, but he's still driving around, so... There is not a lot I can do about him, unless he comes down a little bit more. And he might have a friend. Oh, his, his turret's back up. That's kind of bad for me. Oh, I got one! Yay! <laughs> okay, well, most of my crew is dead, so I'm gonna run away. Oh, there's something right in front of me. Did he see me? I don't think he saw me. Hey, I got another one! Oh! <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> turn, 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 turn. Come on. Punch his armor. Or, or not. You know, like, both is good. That's fine. I'm okay with this. Right, so the next step up would be a 20 millimeter cannon. So we've gone from 12.7 millimeters to 20 millimeters. And that gives us a lot of choice to look at because this doesn't restrict me from choosing anything from any of the BRs. So we have the Weasel, which although it's an SPAA, technically that this is an AFV on the ground. So this counts, but we also have things like the Panzer II or the scout car equivalent of that, which actually also is a 20 millimeter cannon. It's not just limited to those because we also have things like the Rattel 20. And of course the Soviets are not left behind here because they have the 20 millimeter cannon on the T-60. So quite a lot of choice there, but I think I'm gonna go with the one that I've not actually shown in any capacity on this channel as far as I can tell, and that's going to be the Panzer II. Because while Italy also has the L3, and that is a lot of fun, I've done that quite a lot of times already. I've done that in two separate videos now, which you have, if you haven't seen, go and check those out. But I've never actually really taken a serious look at the Panzer II. So we're going to try it, and you can, see, you can tell the Panzer II F isn't spaded yet either. So now's a good time as any to try it. All right, here we go. Now I did say I didn't have this spaded. That doesn't mean I don't have anything unlocked on it, because these high velocity APs, they do pack quite a punch. Why do I get the feeling that our team is already winning this before I've had a chance to do anything. I did kind of spawn a little bit late, but even so. There's nothing left for me? Like, at all? It's starting to seem like everything is dead. Oh, never mind. Honestly, it is just my luck, though. The first thing that pops up kills me. Right. This time, we don't get seen first. Oh, buddy in the BT-7 shooting at something. Let me through. I want to see. I can't see. <laughs> Oh, I see something. Something just went on over there. Oh, there's a few of them, actually. Oh, hello. Okay, I got one of his gunners. Come on, quick reload. Reload. Why do I only have 10 rounds? This is bad. Okay, I don't think I can get through his frontal armor. Somebody help me. Oh, I got him. Ooh, that bomb could have been bad for me. I think it wasn't aimed at me. I'm hitting something down there. I don't know what. Uh, I got a kill assist. But it's okay. We got our one kill. That's all we need. Ooh, I can shoot at this plane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well. So that brings us up to 25 millimeters. And there's quite a few options. Actually, not that many options. Not compared to the 20 mils. And probably the most famous 25 mil is the M3 Bradley. Yeah. That's a big jump up in BRs. Now, of course, given that this is a Bradley, we do have that tow missile, which is neatly folding away there at five frames per second. But this is the caliber challenge, so I'm not supposed to use the tow launcher, which means I'm gonna have to pick soft targets. Well, kind of softish. I mean, I've I picked up the APDS belt, but even that's only got 81 mils of pen on a good day. And also, unlike my other attempts at challenges, assists don't count as kills. Not in this case. Oh, hello, where are you? Oh, there's something. All right, we'll just walk the rounds up to him. I mean, I hit him a bunch of times. I didn't get a kill for it. It's okay. All right, I'm gonna go hunt down that big gun I saw earlier. I think it's one of those Swedish, like, artillery cannons. There you are. Hey, I got a kill. Oh, that wasn't even what I was looking for. That was like a ZSU. That was a little bit of a kill steal, but I don't care. Right, so up from 25 millimeter, there's now 30 millimeter, but I don't actually have anything that has 30 mil on it because there's only a few of those and they're all pretty high tier or Soviet. So I'm not actually unlocking any of those, but that means we get to jump straight into the 37 mils of which there are so many of them because basically every rank one tank has a 37 mil on it. <laughs> so I decided to challenge myself a little bit and go with the worst tanks in rank one, and that is undoubtedly anything on the French tree, because there's a lot of these that have 37s, and they're all terrible. 
The worst of which is the FCM, which I, I'm not that crazy, I'm not gonna push myself to do that. I am, however, going to take the H39, a French tank that I actually really like, mainly because it's kind of cute. And also, the particular 37mm on it doesn't actually suck that much. The obvious downside, of course, being that it is mounted to a Hotchkiss chassis, which means the gun may be okay, but it is gonna take you half a year to get anywhere. Three hours later. All right, what's going on? Do we have friends? Do we have enemies? Oh, we do have enemies. Hello! There was something behind him. I didn't see what it was. Hello! <laughs> oh, and there goes 37mm. And up from 37, we're going to 40. And the temptation is immediately to go to the 40mm grenade launches on the Cobra. The Cobra is sadly, as much as we would like it to be, not a tank. Still, it does give me a fair amount of choice when it comes to tanks, because we've got a fair few of them, and surprisingly, a lot of them are British, because the British two-pounder gun is exactly 40mm, or thereabouts. Which of course means I get to choose the Crusader, and only because a whole bunch of people complained the last time when I didn't play it. And that's only because, well, there's so many other choices here. I mean, I could be playing the Bobblehead for all I know, or any of the A13s, or even the Daimler. But no, because people are going to whine about it if I don't, here's the Crusader. I will say, it is nice to see the old Crusader back again. What was that? Something is on fire over there. I think it's still alive, though. Yep. <laughs> well, it's not alive anymore, but it's the most random shot in the world. I mean, no, it was carefully planned, perfectly executed shot. Like this one. Did I get his gunner? I think I did. Oh, he had a friend. So the next one up from 40 mil, of course, is going to be 45. And that brings us to the first batch of Soviet tanks in this video. So there's a fair few options. I mean, T-70, we've got T-26, we've got the BT-5, we've got BT-7. But I want to use a tank that I've not used in a while. And no, it's not the Sukhoi-25 because that's coming in a later video. It is, of course, the T-126 which is quite a weird and stubby kind of tank. It's very square, like it's actually square. Oh, I love the smell of burnt eyeballs in the morning. Seriously, why does the sun look like this? I mean, I know I've talked about it before, but somebody should really tell the War Thunder devs that the sun doesn't actually look like that, even in the early morning. Also, I've accidentally taken a full load of ammo, so I might just pop like a firecracker any moment. I mean, it's not full full, but 50 rounds is still a lot. Oh, I missed. There we go, I got him. Is there another one back there? I don't know. Oh, that's a Sherman, and that's a dead Sherman. Ooh, he exploded. All right, let's try not to repeat his performance. Hello. Oh, there goes my gunner. Quick, drop artillery on him. There we go. <laughs> oh, I need to repair my turret and my everything else. I hear somebody moving around down here. Hello. Oh, hello. Hang on, let me get my gun on you. There. Oh, I don't have the gun depression. Hang on. My tank's being a bit too Soviet. <laughs> this is one hell of a side slip angle. Look at that. Oh, I have a hole under my turret. Kind of embarrassing. Now, this T-126, uh, I gotta be honest, is, is not very fast. It's like a miniature KV-1. You know, big body, small gun, uh, low speed. Well, there it is. All right, so next up from 45 millimeter, we have 47 millimeter. And there's a few options here, but I think I'm gonna go with Japan to the Type 1 Chihi, which sounds a little bit like if you get Michael Jackson to name a tank and call it the Chihi. <laughs> yeah, I'll just get on with it. You know, it's starting to feel like I'm getting the same maps over and over again, because I am. Oh, I saw one. Oh, I hit him. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Artillery. And I'm dead. <laughs> it's okay, I had another life. I mean, this is a premium after all. Of course I'm gonna have an extra life. All right, where are they? Well, I'm gonna drop artillery on the far side of that and see what moves. Oh, hello. Okay, he didn't see me. That's a non-pen. Uh, that's a problem. I'm trying to break his barrel. Why is it not breaking? Okay, well, he's dead, so that's okay. I feel like something's coming. Oh yeah, something definitely is coming. There we go. <laughs> Wait, I didn't realize you could take out a T-50 from the turret. I always thought you had to like get around them. Oh, no pen. And again. Oh, it's a Matilda. Oh, that is not good. You know, what? I'm actually going to drop artillery on that. 
Matilda as well. There might be artillery coming down to hit me right now. I should probably move. Or not. So now we're up to the 50 millimeter guns and I get to try out the summer event vehicle, which I seem to remember trying out once before, but I don't really remember anything about it. So there it is. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that that ridge line over there might be the best place for me to go, assuming I don't get spotted on the way there. All right, we got a dead friendly up here, which means there might be an enemy like right here. I just heard him. Hello? Oh, hello. Man, sound really matters in this game. Like, a lot. <laughs> oh, hello, little Italian armored car. Okay, I got his wheel. Let's get him again. Oh, a crit. Well, it's an assist, it's fine. Oh, look, the French tank finally arrived to join us. That's one big baguette. I mean, I know the jokes of like French tanks being baguettes is kind of overdone, but you can't look at this tank and tell me that doesn't actually look like a baguette. Oh, he's crossing a trench. All right, I can do that too. Oh wait, no, I can't. Never mind. Well, I tried it again and now I'm stuck. <laughs> you want to try pushing me again? <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna get stuck again, aren't I? <laughs> All right, next up we've got 57 millimeter, which is more or less the British six pounder gun. In this case, on the Sark Mark VI, the bobblehead tank. Man, why does it feel like this tank wants to tip over every time I turn? Seriously, it's got some pretty severe body roll. I'm just looking at this thing down here, which I'm sure is supposed to be some sort of sight, and just sort of wondering why it looks like a tiny little mortar. Can you imagine if this had like, I don't know, like a nine millimeter mortar on it? <laughs> it's like some countries have weapons of mass destruction. Well, we have weapons of minor inconvenience. Oh, hello. What are you doing back there? Kind of just waiting for him to, you know, move a little bit. Oh, damn it, he moved. It's almost like he was watching me and waiting for me to move. Okay, the question is, do I shoot at that? Because I think he sees me. No, he doesn't. Okay, fire. Just a little higher. There we go. And again. Wait, did that just go right over him? I think that just went right over him. There we go. Okay, somebody's near me. I hear movement. I hear an engine. Near me. There he is. Let's go this way. Hello. <laughs> Oh, I took out everything except his gunner. Is he looking the wrong way? Oh, I got him though. I don't know how he shot me, but I got him. <laughs> right, so that's the 57 millimeter, which means we're going up a little bit, which normally means that we should be going up to something like a 75, but there is actually a 60 millimeter gun in the game. And it's a weird one because there's only two of them in the game and they're both Italian. And I just happen to have one of them. This is the Obel 74 HVG, which has an Ottomolara HVG cannon, 60 millimeters. The other one is a text tree version of it, which belongs to the VCC 8060 with a hit fist turret. It has the 60 millimeter gun as well. Are they the same gun? Because they look slightly different, but I'm pretty sure they're the same gun. Either way, this is a very small vehicle, which I mean, it kind of looks like the R3, but let's just figure out what this thing is all about. It's BR 8.0 and it's got a 60 millimeter gun. Man, the Type 87 is such a weird looking vehicle. It's like a box, but with wheels. I should probably pay attention to where I'm going. Oh, this doesn't have thermals, it's got night vision. Well, that's gonna be helpful. We do have FS rounds though. You know, like actual proper FS rounds. So that's surprising. Now this definitely doesn't have much in terms of armor. So it could be good, it could be terrible. I have no idea which way this is gonna go. I'm staying off of the main road for now. I'm gonna see if we can mix it up in town here. Well, I say that not having any armor in, in town might be a problem. I can hear so much activity going on around me right now. Ooh. There's somebody right here. Hello. Hello there. Oh, Jesus, one right next to me. Oh, that's a longer reload than I'd like. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, I'll be honest, this is probably not the best vehicle out there. It definitely is a glass cannon. The gun is decent, though. I I'm actually enjoying that. It is very fast. So, you know, you kind of shoot and scoot. The downside is you don't have uh thermals because it's only night vision you're welcome and you don't have a laser rangefinder. also i went and checked the 60 millimeter on the the other tank is 
actually the same. But it does have prox fuse rounds, so technically it's an anti-aircraft cannon. So this version of it just doesn't get that. But hey, this tank could be yours for just $68 on the Gaijin store, so <laughs> that sounds like money well spent. But you know, it could be worse. You could spend $60 and buy that M60 engineering vehicle. You want to see how bad that is, go and watch the video I did on it. Definitely don't buy that. Alright, BMP-1. Oh. Ah! What was that? I'll be honest, wars would be a lot shorter if you could just figure out where the enemy was by sticking your head out, getting hit, and coming back. I mean, technically you could do that. It's the coming back part that's difficult. Although, honestly, I think the best part about this vehicle is the fact that it gets uh, FS Sabo rounds at 8.0. I mean, that that's pretty impressive. What's that sound? Something's here. Oh, what is that? Oh, I got a kill! <laughs> uh, that, was, that wasn't the only thing. And that one just took a shot at me. Yep. Yeah. Um, you're not gonna beat the reload on some of those autoloader tanks, even if the MX-13 is a, you know, sem semi-automatic loader. But still, I broke my own rule, and that is why I died. Never peek the same place twice. So, after the 60mm cannon, the next step up would be 73mm. Yes, there is actually a 73mm, and it belongs to the BMP-1. But because I don't have this unlocked, we're going straight to the 75 And of course, nothing could be more iconic than an American 75mm gun. And that's what I'm going with here, the M24 Chaffee, but in the Japanese tree, because... Of course it is. And it's a weird one because you can not only find this in the American tree, you can find it on the Chinese tree as well. And the only tank that is more prolific than that is the M4 Sherman, which is now on almost every tech tree in the game. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's every tech tree because Sweden gets one as well now. And of course, I know inevitably there's going to be somebody in the comments going, wait, the more iconic 75 mil would have been the one that's in the German tech tree. And well, it's kind of about the same, really. I, like, I don't really see them being that far different. 75 is 75. Besides, if I really wanted to go on the weird route, I would just go with the 75 on the HSTVL. <laughs> but who wants to play top tier 75 mil games? I don't. I don't even like top tier. Yeah, that's a fun fact for you. Alrighty, let's get a little scouting going. Oh, hello. What are you? And I missed. <laughs> I tried it and I missed. Alright, well, we can't use the same spot twice because he did definitely look right at me. Oh, that's a KV-2. That's a Kayusha. Uh, there? Nope. There we go. There's somebody right here. Yep. Oh, I got another one! Oh, hello. He's pre-aiming this spot, but I don't know if he can actually see me. I'm gonna measure that range. 350. Oh, there we go. Baby, <laughs> well, somebody finally got me. Impressive though, three kills. And now, of course, we go up exactly one millimeter to 76. And, well, there's nothing more iconic than an M18 Hellcat. I never really know where to go on this map, so I'm just going straight up the middle. Right, if I don't capture this point. I don't think anyone else is going to. I see a tank. That is a tiger that just shot at me. There might be two of them, actually. Hello? Oh, there are two. There's a tiger and there's a panther. 500. Oh, I can just hit him. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Honestly, the, the M18 is one of the most fun vehicles you can play. It's got a very powerful gun with a really good shell, and it's fast, and it scouts, and you... And for things that you can't kill outright, you can just be incredibly annoying. Not to mention it has a 50 cal as well, so you can actually be annoying to planes too. Speaking of... Oh my god, I actually hit him! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I really was not expecting it to work that well, especially after I just said it. I thought I was gonna jinx myself by saying it. Oh, hello. There's one. And there's two! I mean, I'm getting greedy at this point because I really only need one kill. Somebody seems determined to end it for me. Ooh, I just missed that. Well, all right, then we're going up one more millimeter to 77, which there is actually only one tank. Well, technically two, but it's the same gun. So this is the 77 millimeter Mark II, and it's the same gun on the Concept 3. So I just had to change things up a bit and let's play a medium. And now despite the tooltip actually saying this is a 77 millimeter, that's not technically true. This is actually 76.2 millimeters. Why the point two? 
I have no idea, but that's what this is. But compared to the 76 millimeter on the Hellcat, this doesn't have APHE rounds, and that's unfortunately what makes the M18's guns so nice to use. This only has solid shot. Now, of course, these are shots that have 152 mils of max pen, but it's still not fun. Mainly because with solid shot, you either need the internals of the tank to be very close together, or you're gonna have to do multiple shots, because without explosive filler, it goes in and goes through to the other side without exploding, which is kind of what does the most amount of damage on the inside. All right, I can hear something moving around, and I think it's an enemy. Hello? I think he heard me too. All right, time to get ourselves into a sniping position and hope we don't die on the way there. This map kind of sucks for getting into position in, though. Mainly because everything is mud, and so you move really slowly. Oh, there's enemies over there. Oh, that was well short. Well, I'm gonna move over this way. Just keep an eye out on that side. Ooh, what was that? Hello? Wait, I got him? Did we just trade? Well, I'm counting it. <laughs> so that's 77 mils out of the way, and the next one up logically would be 85, because there really isn't anything before that. Except for maybe this. This is the 82 millimeter BM824. And yes, that's not a gun. That is a rocket launcher. Nice. And yes, this is an excuse to play the BM8, but it counts 82 millimeters. So let's get to it. Oh, perfect. We have advanced to the Rhine right as our first map. Wonderful. You know what? I'm gonna abuse artillery and just drop it straight there because why not? All right, we've got 24 shots and no reload. So yes, I think we don't have a reload. I'm not really sure. I believe this fires from left to right. So I kind of have to aim off a little bit here. Yep. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the chassis of a T26 that this is based on? It, it At least it looks like a T26. All right, there's something coming down this way. Does he see me? I don't think so. He did just shoot, though. Come on, get down. And fire. Oh, I missed, really. Oh, fire, fire, fire. They're in there somewhere. Oh, I hit him! <laughs> I've only got two rockets left, but it worked. I am okay. I have a 16 second repair. He was going for my rocket rack though. And I don't know if these rockets actually explode. I don't think they do. All right, somebody else is capturing the point. But I can hear stuff moving to my left. Yep, there is definitely something over there. Well, I missed. I tried, but I missed. And so we finally arrived at 84 millimeters, also known as the 20 pounder Mark I gun right here on the Centurion Mark III. And this is actually one of the more common guns. It's actually on a few different versions of the Centurion and a few other tanks in history as well. So let's see how good it really is. Alrighty, so the Centurion, a tank that's been exported to many countries. And there's one example right there, the Mark V-1, which is the Australian version of that tank. What I also find really interesting is that this gun actually gets um, APDS rounds or discarding saber rounds, which are not the same as the fin stabilized discarding saber rounds because they work slightly differently, but it gives you more pen for the same, well, the same amount of punch, if that makes sense. Oh, there's a little weasel over here. Oh, he's shooting at something down there. Hello? All right, there we go. There's the one kill. Good thing I was paying attention. Right, I'm going to just peek down this way because I think there's probably an enemy at the end of this road here, potentially. Yep, he took out our, uh, I think it was an IS-6 down there and possibly an enemy down this street as well. So Got a lot of angles to cover. Oh, there's one right in front of me. One of the downsides of Urban. Okay, that's a crit. Okay, I took out his gunner. He's on fire. I'm gonna see if I can finish him. Looks like a shot to the ammo here. There we go. Oh, okay. I didn't need the shot to the ammo because it took out the rest of the crew. Lot of spalling. Lot of spalling with this particular type of ammo. And of course, oh, got hit in the side. All right. And the next one up from 84, of course, it's going to be the 85. And the most iconic use of an 85 millimeter gun is Soviet. And there's a few of these. There's a T-34-85. It's got it in the name. And it is probably the most iconic usage of this. But also, one lesser known version is the KV-85, which for all intents and purposes, this looks like a prototype IS. 
won. And it did kind of lead more or less directly to it. So since we haven't really had a heavy tank so far in this video, let's give this one a chance. I gotta say though, the 85mm gun on this chunky hull and turret combination really kind of looks a little small. Definitely not the uh, most powerful looking thing. But at the same time, this is also not the heaviest of heavy tanks. It's actually kind of lightly armored for what it is. But that does mean that it's decently, I, I wouldn't say fast, but it's not as sluggish as some of the, uh, well, other heavy tanks of its BR. Especially the KV-1. That one is uh, quite the chonker. I don't know if I've mentioned in previous videos, but it is quite common for Soviet tanks to actually have worse gun depression uh, and conversely slightly better elevation than their Western counterparts. And one of the reasons for that is due to uh, geography, really. Russia itself is a very flat country, so having tanks with a lot of ridgeline ability just wouldn't really be necessary on a country with a lot of flatland. And if you compare that to something like, say, the modern Leopards, which prioritize a good elevation and depression, and it's easy to see why, because a lot of the eastern border of, uh, of countries such as Poland, and uh, Germany are definitely more mountainous as a result. Now, I did see a shot come from this direction here. Now, the artillery smoke is kind of blocking my view a little bit. So I didn't quite see what shot. Oh, no, there it is. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. And there we go. I mean, say what you will about this tank's um, armor for a heavy tank. That gun is definitely very good. And I just heard you moving along but I can't get my gun down. So one way you can make up for poor gun depression, let me just maneuver myself here. Oh, I just missed him. Oh, he hit me in the breach. Oh, that's not good. I was gonna say one of the ways you can make up for it is by backing yourself up onto something that's slightly el like elevated so that your hull's pointing down a little and that's how you get that gun depression going. Doesn't always work, but you know what, in this case, we got our one kill, so mission accomplished. Now, of course, going up from 85 millimeters, nothing would be more iconic than an 88 millimeter, especially in this form on the Tiger. Now, I could go with the Tiger 1, which of course famously had an 88, and of course there's the Flak 88 as well, but the Tiger 2 is one that I've not really played much in any videos, and I guess that's what we're doing in this video where I'm kind of just playing a lot of vehicles that I've never really shown off much outside of this, but if we're gonna run through every caliber, there's no way we're leaving an 88 out. Honestly, after playing a Soviet heavy tank, it's really impressive just to see how much gun depression they were able to get out of these tanks. Right, let's see if we can get a little closer to the front. I just want to get a little bit of a better view on what's going on down here. Okay, there's something. I think we're looking at about there. Oh, that was a perfect shot! Oh, something died over there. That's slightly concerning. I'm also a bit concerned about my flank over here because potential enemies down that way too. And we're completely exposing our side. Interesting thing though, I have been told many times about side scraping. I do want to point out, while we are aware, for tank commanders and operators, we are aware of penetration angles and angling armor as well as facing, we're not gonna be sitting there in combat thinking about angling armor. That is not a thing. That is very much a 100% game only element. And the reason is, trying to get your armor at the perfect angle or even close to during combat is virtually impossible. And it's gonna be influenced by a lot of external factors like terrain. So. It's not gonna be a thing. And unfortunately I did get killed, but we did get our one kill. So we're okay. Right, so that brings us up to 90 millimeters. We're about halfway through the calibers in the game, which I think at this point kind of illustrates to you just how many different types of guns on just tanks are available in this game. But this is the Rattel 90. It's a 90 millimeter GT2 cannon, and it is virtually the same turret and gun as that on the AML 90, but on a much bigger body. Honestly though, I think the Rattel 90 gets a bit of a bad rep because it's so big. But then a lot of uh, AFVs and IFVs are very big. It's kind of par for the course, really. But this gun fires heat FS rounds. And with over 300 millimeters of pen at 6.0, that's a little bit scary. 
It's one of those things that actually makes the AML-90 such a fun tank to play. The only difference is this is much bigger and with an exposed driver, meaning this that I'm doing right here is potentially dangerous because the whole front of the vehicle is exposed. Now it does also get the uh, spotting ability or active scouting ability while also being very large. So, you know, make of that what you will. I just don't think it's going to be the sort of, you know, sneaky scout that you might be looking for. I hear something moving. There is something on the other side of this building. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I think I better move. Oh, I got him! <laughs> I moved at the right time. <laughs> that is a super Pershing, and yeah. The uh, turret armor on uh, the super Pershing works like a composite screen, so it absolutely will stop a heat round. One of the few things that can, so it's a good thing I hit him in the hull. Alright, something's immediately here. Oh, that didn't kill him! His, his engine's out, his engine's out. Something coming around the corner here, potentially. Okay, that's a- that's a- that's a hull hit as well! No! Oh, that was- he came up behind me as well. Alright, for the next two, I'm kind of putting them together because they're a little weird. The first one you've probably already seen, this is the tortoise. Now this thing has a 32 pounder gun which measures out at roughly 94 millimeters. And that's kind of a big gun but it is also kind of a big tank destroyer. I mean look at the width of those tracks but the other one is on the exact opposite end of the scale but its gun is slightly bigger. And it's one you might not have seen before. It's the Electo and it's got a 95 millimeter gun but it is a heck of a lot smaller because this is actually based on the chassis of the Tetrach. So let's see what both of these tanks can really do. I have questions about what just happened there. But that BTR is on fire. Also, I fully understand why they call this a tortoise. It's heavily armored and doesn't move very fast. So it's a fitting name. Personally though, given that it's British, I would have called it the tea time. Because the time it takes for you to get this tank to the front is about the same amount of time as you need to boil a kettle and have a nice cup of tea. Yeah, it's not just the speed that's an issue though. This only comes with solid shot. At least I only have the solid shot unlocked. So gonna be having to place my shots pretty carefully or hope well, whatever I shoot at is kind of small. What's that? Oh, it's my counterpart. It's the T95. That definitely looks like a T95. Well, here comes the age old question. Is it Tuttle versus Tortoise? Cause yeah, I'm not penning anything. Wait a minute. Okay, wait, I'm gonna elevate my gun so he knows I'm not gonna shoot at him. I'm gonna go over here. I'm not gonna shoot at him. We are here to make friends. I'm here to join. Well, that's just rude. <laughs> Well, that's the last time I tried to make friends with the turtles. Clearly the tortoises are unwanted. And I didn't get my kill from that match either. Now there's definitely something up here. Oh. Oh, hello. Somebody took a shot at me. Okay, but I'm concerned about what's coming this way. Because something is definitely moving up here. Hello. Damn it! I missed! You know, for the size of gun, it's got a pretty speedy reload. There we go. Still, so, no time to mourn them because it's on to the Electo with its 95mm gun and a very weird vehicle. And it's actually kind of small. I mean, even compared to the Tetrak. So, it's time to see what 95mm at BR 1.7 actually means. And we have heat rounds. I mean, they're heat rounds with only 110 mils of pen, but then I'm fairly certain nothing at this BR has 100 mils of armor anyway, so. Okay, just gonna sneak over onto this side. Just kind of kind of use the smaller size of the chassis to stay hidden, really. Okay, somebody's on the A point. And I know this A-point's kind of a little small, like it's in between these buildings, so maybe that M31 can go and kind of like scare him a little bit while I figure out what's going on up here. And... hello? Okay, he just fired. Hello! I'm, I'm very surprised he let me do that. I'm guessing he might have been reloading and just kind of gave up. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> Also, I don't get into the habit of really recommending premiums that often, but I mean, this is one tank that you can get on the Gaijin store, and it I got this for $8, like eight Gaijin coins, and this is the best $8 I've ever spent on a premium vehicle. Like, hands down. Hello! Oh my god, the blast actually made him move. No, 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 don't turn around. I'm still reloading. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. You- How did you miss? How did you miss? I, 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 now you hit my driver. I don't like that. And now he's got me. Still the most fun eight bucks I've ever spent. 
And now we're up into the triple digits, and it's the first 100mm cannon in the game. Well, it's the earliest you'd get into a 100mm because this is the Lancia 3 row, and I know this is not a tank. But that honestly doesn't stop it from taking on some of the bigger tanks. At least in my mind, it is a lot of exposed crew though. Oh, there's already enemies. Okay, time to- time to run. Okay, well that one's dead. Yeah, just poke your head out, and there- no, that was well short. Okay, I really shouldn't be alive anymore. And I'm probably not going to be for very long. Probably a good idea for me to range find this. And that's what I get for range finding. So I'm gonna clock that up to a bad round and leave it at that. <laughs> we'll call this what it is, okay? It's literally a delivery truck with a cannon stuck to it. Nowadays you call this a technical. Back then you call this cutting edge military equipment. Especially since the gun can literally point at the back of the driver's head. Honestly, firing this forward in between the driver and the vehicle commander up there is the epitome of your injuries are not service related. Just like my hearing loss is not service related. <laughs> it's sad that that's a meme, by the way. It really is. I'm going backwards. No! My gunner's knocked out. My driver's knocked out. My everything's knocked out. Also, I'm fully aware that this is not the only 100mm gun in the game. The more common one is actually the Soviet 100mm found on the IS, as well as the T-44. And there we go. And that's a kill. When you do actually get the gun on target, it's pretty good. It's just the getting into position and getting on target thing that's a little difficult. And the survival part. Yeah, that, that's difficult too. Yeah, I'm getting the ranging all wrong on this. All right, time to get moving. We've lost another gunner. It's okay, we have four of them. Hello there! Oh my god, I hit them both. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, that was good while it lasted. And now we get onto what could possibly be considered the beginning of the modern tank gun, which is the 105 millimeter, and probably one of the earlier examples of this. This is the 105 on the M51 Super Sherman, I guess is what you could probably call it. This is the Israeli upgrade to the M4 Sherman, and uh, it's a weird one. Now, when I say this is a weird one, well, it is a homegrown invention. It's something that the IDF actually designed and prepared on their own. And it's definitely weird because, well, at the time that this came into service, you gotta figure that they had access to more advanced tanks than the Sherman. Like, for example, the Pershing. Of course, later on, versions of the Patton that would become available. But the fact that they decided to modernize a Sherman just kind of goes to show exactly what a situation uh, Israel found itself in. And how this tank isn't so much a marvel of engineering as it is completely built out of necessity. Because if there's one thing that bigger, heavier, and more modern tanks have, it's a bigger and heavier and more modern price tag. Right, we got heat rounds loaded and virtually World War II era armor. Gonna have to make this count. This does have the same problem that the Sh Sherman Firefly does in that the long gun makes it very wobbly and it doesn't have a stabilizer. So we kind of have to go a little slow. You ever heard the phrase, slow is smooth and smooth is fast? I feel like it applies to the wobbly guns of the Shermans very well. If you go slow, your gun's gonna be smooth. And that means you get to shoot faster. I don't think that's where that phrase came from, but it's pretty fitting. All right, I got an enemy tank way out to the right over there near the bridge. I could push out that way. It looks like there's only a light tank down that way. But then I risk getting shot on the side. As expected, there's two heavy... Well, there's at least one heavy tank down that way. I can hear a really big engine near me. Oh, hello. All right, there's his turret crew. Oh, no, that's just his loader and commander, not his gunner. Oh, come on, reload. I need to get his breach. Come on, breach, 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 breach. Okay, I got his breach and I didn't get the kill. Because I didn't see the other panther that was up there. But of course, this being the Israeli equivalent of a reserve tank means I have two more to go without having used backups. Which is weirdly historically accurate if you think about the history of these tanks. It's actually one of the few times in this game where you can wholeheartedly say the history and the gameplay do line up. Okay, that's gotta be about... there. Oh, that was well short of him. I don't know what I was thinking. That's got to be like 950. Oh, bang on. Okay, we'll get one more. Come on. And... 
There we go. Oh, hello. That looks to be about the same range, too. Oh, just got him. Oh, that's his engine, isn't it? Oh, it's, no, it's his fuel tank. Okay, he might be on fire. Good thing with his heat rounds is you can do the same damage from any distance. Which, given that you don't really have a lot of armor, is kind of a good idea. Come on. Hey, I hit him. All right, I think we gotta go there and reclaim the A point. Also, I do realize that these videos are getting longer and longer. And, and let me know what you think down in the comments about the longer videos. Do you like them? And if you've watched this far, go ahead and leave a like on the video. And if you're already watching this far and you're not subscribed, then I'll definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, what's going on here? Oh, he just skated away. Hello! Oh, that's not the damage I was hoping for. Rats. <laughs> and now, once again, we go up one millimeter and we get to the 106 millimeter recoilless rifle, which is quite a common weapon in War Thunder. It's, a, it's on a lot of vehicles. And if you saw my recent video, you can see how deadly these guns really are on the M50 Ontos. So go and check out that video if you haven't seen that yet. But this is a different vehicle. The Type 60 SPRG is a Japanese Ontos, if that makes sense. And unlike the American Ontos, where six guns was definitely deemed to be a little bit excessive, the Japanese were a little more conservative and they decided, you know what, let's just have two. But we're still gonna fire them in the exact same way. So the spotting rifles that you can see at the top there, uh, yeah, that's still how you aim this thing because I didn't figure that part out either. What's equally weird is that the guns are not linked at all. You fire them individually. So you can see at the bottom of the screen there, the number one and number three, they're actually considered two separate guns. Which is weird considering the Ontos has six of them and they're all considered part of the same gun. What I'd really like to be able to do is to be able to switch ammo types, so be able to have like one type of ammo per gun. So one is Hesh and one is Heat. Not that it would really make much of a difference, but I think it'd be kind of cool as an option to have. Ooh, the Samuel just took a nasty hit there. Can I get in here and repair him? Or is that going to be kind of pointless? Let's see. Uh, okay, I can get this close. There we go. Now it's down to 10 seconds. And he's dead, so it didn't matter at all. Oh, uh, and I tried to be helpful. And I get people killed. I mean, to be fair, I had nothing to do with him getting killed. We are small. Very small. Right. I can't get through that wall. But I would like to be able to contribute to my team. And I think the way I'm going to be able to do that is by going through this wall unsuccessfully. Well, that's a problem. Let's do it again. I feel like this is going to be an entire episode of Panzer tries to go through walls. Yep, that's not happening. Oh, hello. There's something down there. I'm getting distracted, but... Oh, I think I can do this. Oh, perfect shot right down in the middle. I might have slightly given me away, though. Oh, I'm through the wall. I'm free. This is a lot wobblier compared to the Ontos. The Ontos is a much more stable vehicle. Okay, is there somebody here? Hello. Oh, that double whammy. Okay, you know what? I take back what I said. Not having the guns linked means you can really fire them off. Very quickly. In fact, you can probably fire them off almost exactly at the same time. Oh, somebody just took a shot at me. And it's an M50! <laughs> oh, it's killed by my American counterpart. I guess six guns are better than one. Or two. Now, after the 106, we should be going to 107 millimeters. And unfortunately, this is pretty much the only tank in the game that has a gun of that caliber. Unless I'm mistaken. But unfortunately, I don't have this vehicle. In fact, I don't even know that many people who do have it. If you do have it, let me know down in the comments. And of course, the next caliber after that is 115 millimeters. I don't know if I'm missing any here, but pretty sure from 107 it goes to 115. And this is the only other option in there, which is the T62, which I also don't have. So we're going to have to skip ahead to probably the most well-recognized tank gun in existence in the modern day, and that is the 120 millimeter gun. And that gun is, of course, available in many forms. The Leopard 2 famously has the Rheinmetall L44 120 millimeter gun, but today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. And this is the M1A1 with the M256, which for all intents and purposes is the same gun as the Leopard, with some modifications. And also it's made in America, which may or may not be better. And here we go. I think we spawned late to this one. And I know a lot of people keep telling me, hey, you can turn off that setting. That means you're not gonna spawn into battles 
that are already ongoing. Yeah, well, I don't really like doing that. I just want to get into battles fast. But this, of course, is the export model of the Abrams tank. And it's actually Australian. I mean, uh, the tank is in Australian, but the crew is. And that just makes it better in every way, shape or form. Oh, sorry, I should probably be doing this uh, in a lot more Australian way, so. So yeah, we got a few tanks going around the outside of the uh, A point. And uh, it's around about Delta 3. Some of our mates are taking a pounding over on their side. She asked me is probably a fair shout for a weekend. Yeah, typical Soviet bias there. I happen to hit him on the waifu pillow and it just happens to deflect a 120 round like it's nobody's business. But uh, I think we should be all right to keep it moving so long as he doesn't spot our antenna he's sticking over the bushes here. Yeah, there's another one uh, dead over here and there's one right next to him. Uh, and yet again, you know, his waifu pillows are just way too strong. Just gonna sit tight for a second while we uh, fix our periscopes here. Uh, the uh, commander's fair dinkum, you know, he's taken a round to the head and he's, um, well, he's dead. So, kind of gonna deal with it, really. Right, that's enough of that. <laughs> okay, I think... Ooh, this is not a good spot. Oh, we're side on. That's bad. Yep. I knew it was bad, but we deflected it. We deflected it, but I do hear the sound of something Soviet moving around. Oh, that's one of those KVTs that got taken out over there. Yeah, let's just move it back a little bit. Do have decent gun depression, so we can probably make use of that. Oh, he's coming up. Hello. How you doing? It's a leopard. Oh, now I just feel bad. Oh, I can see their spawn from here. Oh, they can see that I can see their spawn from here. All right, we're just gonna rotate ourselves out of the way, and then we'll repair our track. <laughs> Gotta remember that even when your track is broken, you can still move. I mean, unless both of them are broken. I remember, don't peek the same place twice. Just don't do it. Oh no, I'm doing it. There we go. <laughs> I do feel slightly bad because I am shooting into their spawn, but I mean, he shot first. Oh, so, you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, there's not really much else I can do here. This game's pretty much over. So the next one up from that is going to be the 122mm. And of course, what more iconic use of that is going to be in the IS series. And of course, it's going to be the IS-2. I'm going with this one, particularly because it also has the sloped armor at the front, which I think is going to be useful in some way. And away we go. I don't know if it's just me, but do the Soviet tanks look very green? I mean, nothing wrong with it. It's just very green. Also, this one looks like it's got stretch marks. I mean, they're probably not stretch marks, but they certainly look like them. Right. You got enemies on the B point. And let's see. Can we see anything? Oh, I see a machine gun moving. That machine gun might be connected to a tank. Oh, hello. Are you coming to me or am I coming to you? What are we doing here? There we go. I got him. I don't know what this guy's doing, but hello. <laughs> Oh, I've got a 45 second repair and my turret, my turret rings out. So I'm not moving at all. All right, what's around the corner here? Hello? Anybody home? Something spotted there, but I can't quite see it. But I mean, this is their spawn area, so I don't really want to do much with it. <laughs> and I got bombed, but it's okay. We got our one kill. And of course the next caliber up from that is going to be a 125, which is the T-72. And T-64, neither of which I have unlocked because I don't really play the Soviet tanks all that much. So instead of going through every single vehicle at this point that I don't have unlocked yet, we're gonna go to the very next one that I do. And that is the 150mm gun. On this, which I believe was commonly referred to as the Sturmpanzer, but I could be wrong about that. So fun fact, this map is called Kuban, which is more or less the same sound that this tank makes when it hits someone. Thank you for punctuating my joke. Gotta love teammates. So this is sort of the start of the artillery caliber weapons in the game. And I know technically anything above 50 millimeters could be considered artillery caliber depending on the era that it's in. But the game kind of treats them as tank destroyers and they're not always tank destroyers. So it's kind of referred to as a self-propelled gun which then can also include assault guns, which is actually what this is. So it's not meant for killing tanks or vehicles at all. It's meant for killing bunkers. Oh, I missed my chance. He's run away. Uh, you're about that far away. Oh, the tree blocked it. What? Well, that's just silly. And now I'm being shot from behind. 
I'll be honest, trees stopping a high explosive shell is kind of stupid. I mean, if it was like a, a wall or some sort of heavy obstacle, I'd understand, but tree branches? No, that's just not a thing. Oh, I see some shots. Uh, you gotta be like, I don't know, 800. Oh, that was, that was really, really far away. Um, let's say maybe there. Oh, that was well over. Okay, you're a lot closer than I thought you were. I'd say it's about there. <laughs> he really thought he had me. <laughs> Honestly, though, when you make shots like that with uh, such a high arc, it makes you wonder why don't mortars exist in this game? Like, really short-range stuff. I know a lot of people complain, like, we don't want artillery in War Thunder, but, like, you kind of already have it. Oh, hello. Oh, that was well over. Okay, that's... that's... that's not good. Um, now my gunner's knocked out. Mm, this is bad. This is very bad. He hit my radiator. And he hit my everything. And now we're getting to some of the biggest guns in the game. The 152mm SU-152. I gotta be honest though, I have not played this tank at all. Like, I have nothing unlocked on it. I really don't know how good it actually is. But I guess we're gonna find out. Considering it's a short-barreled howitzer, I mean, it's kind of a short barrel for a 152. Those aiming marks are really close together. This is not something I would have expected. Also, pretty decent zoom. And it's definitely not as slow as I thought it was going to be. So, overall, a pretty big surprise. All right, something's shooting at our chaffee over there. Somebody just took a shot at me. Hello, you're about there. Okay, that was way over. Way, way over. Oh, that's a long reload. Okay, that's a problem. Good thing I've got this little ditch to hide in, I guess. Okay, you're about there. Oh, okay, that was pretty close. No, 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 stay there. There we- oh. Well, I broke his track, so I guess he is staying there. Now, I mean, he is shooting at me now, though, so that is a problem. You know, I'm gonna move. I don't have parts to repair, so... Kind of a problem with being stock, I guess. Hopefully, I can still fire. I mean, the breach isn't red, it is orange, though, so it might have a chance of misfiring. We're gonna find out. Oh, I just got hit in the side. Hang on a second. Uh, nope. There. Well, it's a misfire. I really wish that M4A1 would turn to this left and have a look. I really wish he would. You know, I may have also forgotten that the KV-2 has a... Similar caliber gun. I know there's gonna be people who have already written in the comments going, Hey, why didn't you play the KV-2? But I have a good excuse. I mean reason. I mean excuse. But I did actually do a whole video on the KV-2 before. So, I don't know. This kind of covers it. <laughs> Alright, what are you shooting at and should I be concerned? Okay, got artillery coming in. Oh yeah, no, there is somebody on the A point. I'm kind of thinking of waiting for the artillery to come down first before going out there, so... I'll stick to this side. Alright, somebody just died to my right, so I think... there's somebody over here. There he is! Get him! I missed! Oh, that... that kinda sucks. Oh, now I'm being hit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um... Problem. Wait, 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 wait. I can turn. I have a broken track, but I can still turn. And I missed. Yeah, that was somebody waiting for that. Okay, okay, fine. Maybe it's a sign that I should actually just be playing the KV-2. And this is not to say that the SU-152 is not good, by the way. It's just to say that I really don't know how to play it. <laughs> I mean, considering I unlocked it today, that should tell you all you need to know. Wow, those craters really slow you down, huh? Oh, wow. Okay, we got a KV-2 train going on here. This could be interesting. I'm uh, just gonna slowly inch towards the A point. It's already been capped, so somebody might be watching. There it is. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And fire! I hit him, it's not a kill. Alright, I need to back up and reload. And again, now I'm reloaded. Alright. I'm sorry, Churchill, but it had to be done. And now I reload for the next 20 years. I was gonna keep, you know, keep backing up. Make him come to me. Uh, let's just pull it back this way. Come to me. 
Okay, well that didn't work. So while I was talking about artillery being in the game as a potential future prospect, which will probably never happen, the game has this. This is the Type 75 SPH, and if it looks like an artillery gun, it's because it is. So why is this in the game? Now obviously I do know the reason why this is in the game, and it's because... Japan needs more vehicles. That's really what it comes down to, and this kind of fills that role of being... Well, it's a self-propelled gun that we can use. So there's that. But it can elevate its gun so ridiculously high that it is actually just an artillery piece. <laughs> so why not just let me use it as an artillery piece? I don't, I don't understand that part. Once again, I am aware of how long this video is. So, if you've stuck with me this far, why don't you comment down below at the timestamp 10 minutes and 62 seconds, the words, Banken Hotel Baggery. Oh, what was that? Oh, hello. Look, that's a kill yeah. and I'm counting it. I don't even care, I'm counting that. <laughs> And finally, the moment you've probably been waiting for since the very beginning, if you know what the largest gun in the game is. Because this is it right here. The 380 millimeter Sturmtaker. And honestly, I don't really know what else to say about this other than it's a bunker buster, but from World War II. And it's built on the chassis of a Tiger, and it has a mortar in it, which holds that round right there that looks like a... <coughs> I don't even know if I can say that word on YouTube without getting demonetized, but there it is. That's what it looks like. And yes, getting shot there will blow up the entire tank. So I gotta be the one to shoot first, which is gonna be kind of tricky because those are the aiming marks. And so, yeah, there's quite a lot of distance to go, if I'm honest. Right, I'm just gonna stick back here and see if I can elevate this gun. And we're gonna go from there. All right, what range are we looking at over there? Alright, that's 500 meters. That's about there. So I'm gonna say roughly there. Oh my god, that explosion is massive! What?! Okay, I know 380 millimeters is huge, but I was not expecting that. Yeah, that's 345 kilograms and 135 kilograms of explosive. And it doesn't even take that long to reload. I'm pretty sure that's on par with like the KV-2, right? Or maybe a little longer? I'm not really sure now. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I could have gotten a multi-kill with that, but I don't want to push it. I really don't, but I want to I wanna do that again. I should point out that this projectile that's in here is a rocket, so that's why it doesn't seem to have like the big boom when you fire it. And that's really kind of something. Oh, behind me. Oh no! Well, and so uh, there it is. The biggest gun in War Thunder. We started from the bottom and literally now we're here. From 50 caliber to 380 millimeters. This has been evolving calibers. And I know there have been some tanks that I've missed. And at some point, maybe I'll do this challenge again to include those that I definitely didn't cover. And of course, with the number of tanks that share similar calibers, there's going to be a few that I could definitely swap out. So if you want to see me do that again, definitely go ahead and hit a like. And of course, subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. Comment down below what your favorite vehicle in this entire lineup has been. This has been a very long video. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Looking forward to doing these longer videos with you guys in future as well. And if you're really enjoying it, please do let me know because it not only helps me out, but it also helps YouTube to know what uh, you guys are interested in. My name is Panzer. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.